Hi guys, it's Artem here. So I think I finally understood the caching in Next.js and how to work it in the most efficient way. Uh, I don't know, but for some reason, uh, this is the kind of the most complex thing in Next.js when it comes to like dynamic interfaces, how to work it, uh, with it in the most straightforward way without like all this complexity and everything. It, it, this is basically comes to uh, which client side fashion library you want to use like react query which is also really good or use svr which is built by uh, next.js team yeah i tried both i think they're both really good but i kind of like the simplicity and efficiency of this uh, svr and kind of the logic behind it how it all flows like how you are uh, uh, structuring it in your in your app because because uh, when it comes to data fetching it's not like how you've done this one time. It's more like the rules that you introduce into your project to make your work efficient. Like so you can come to this project in a month or two and still understand what is going on and how it's all structured, where you fetch that uh, data uh, by default, how you revalidate this, like how you make it all work. Like so there are the rules that you follow for your data fetching. Yeah, I tried SVR and I really uh, enjoyed working with this. And I just want to share some tips, maybe like my understanding of it i'm not going to go to the technical details because you always can go to the and check the documentation it's uh, quite nice i will keep it simple i just want to un explain like how it's all working on my end and how i'm doing this so it's a simple project just a default next.js app i just del deleted everything i added some random api call to uh, like uh, stupid jokes endpoint uh, or something just uh, just so we have some some data yeah basically as we are it works the same like any data fashion library you can find so i have a simple a test project set it up it's just some data fetching it's uh, taking some random uh, stupid joke and displaying it on the page first i just want to explain how it's all working by default because if you use svr if you'll check their documentation they first are showing you how to use the just a regular page a request and then i will also show you how you can use the server actions because uh, i think nowadays if you use next.js you are almost 100 percent using the server action for most of your actions uh related to the api calls inside the app and other uh yeah by default this just just use the regular api call like um, like the endpoint and also the fetcher function that you need to create on your on your on your app so let's do this I, this is like kind of like final result with the server actions right now i will just change it a little bit and i will explain what i'm what i'm doing so if you go to leap to fetcher so you they suggest creating this fetcher this is basically just a wrapper around like native fetch request to make it work with us as we are nothing else so just a simple function this is all from the docs so we have the fetcher and we have the the endpoint that we need so for in this case i'm just using the random joke endpoint to get the data so if we go here then we need to import use as we are uh, and also I'm, I'm importing the mutate i will also explain it it's basically for our um, updates so we can that, that we can like manually revalidate the data and then let's do one thing so we will first comment this out this example with this with the server actions the second one i will uncomment add here the our call uh, the um, endpoint for the for the joke and then we will specify the feature so we will just use the default example let's say and we will also in say add here the loading state and here we just displaying and uh, refreshing uh, via button also i will go to the, my page right here where i uh, importing them the joke component and i will just quickly hide this uh, svr config that I will explain that it's really important as well. So now we'll have just a joke. Uh, let's check it. Let's go. We have the page. The joke is fetched, it and we can refresh, refresh it, and we see uh, this thing. So which is which is nice. So it's basically work like as a as a regular fetch request. Uh, why it's why it's nicer for uh, for this particular step? We don't need to care about the loading state and uh, revalidated state. So it's all handled by a use use SVR, and we just get access for. Uh, the statuses so, so what is the state of the current uh, request and we can easily show the ui for the validating or or a loading state so if i go back to cursor and here will is loading or is validating so is loading is when it's loading by default and is validating is when i am revalidating it manually so let's go let's try it out we refresh the page so we see on the page load we see loading then we see the joke we click refresh so now i'm clicking refresh nothing happens because we need to specify the correct endpoint that we need to, that we want to revalidate so in this case it's just this one our random joke so this mutate function that's also important from uh, svr 
you just specify which one you want to revalidate and, and it's doing its job so if we refresh the page we see loading then we see we press refresh it's revalidating and then we see load indicator as well so this is all good this is all good like and this is kind of straightforward it's nice it's uh, super super simple to set up you just need basically to uh, install svr just uh, npm install svr and you already to go so you can just start adding these um, uh, hooks to your to your app and you can also make them reusable just save it in a separate file and use it across the app so it's going to be fetched once the same like in react query and the data available where you call it which is good so but what is the most important thing for me like and what i enjoy the most is to, um, you can use the SVR config to prefetch data on the server and make it available on the client. This is kind of uh, opened my eyes a little bit. Maybe it's like a little bit dumb, but uh, for me, it's just open uh, other other kind of view on this. So you don't need to be choose one of the sites. So are you prefer server side fetching and then your data have some problems with caching and you need to care about their validating and other stuff, or you doing purely client side fetching and then you need to care about the suspense, like loading states and all this stuff. But you can like combine them both in a nice way you can have prefetch data on the server you can then have all the client side interactivity there but with the, with the data available by default so you avoid the loading states you have all your data always available but then you can all also do the optimistic updates mutate when you need it inside the component using the client side uh, data that you prefetched on the server let me show you how to do this with uh, use uh, svr so first of all let's just clean it up a little bit let's just delete this one endpoint why yeah, and, and comment my kind of the um, main one that I use. Why is it up this way? Because uh, as I said, I prefer using the uh, server actions and uh, this is the, the way I'm working. And even if it's the fetch call, I go, usually create the actions, a folder with the index or like uh, the file inside. And I have some server actions. Use server. This is, uh, I try it with the regular revalidate with a separate uh, root. But the main thing is get joke while we just fetch into uh, this, um, uh, uh, this dumb, joke, dumb jokes endpoint and uh, returning the data. So uh, then what we ha have here, so instead of providing here the fetcher and the API, call, uh, API uh, endpoint, we are providing the ID, basically the unique identifier of this particular fetch request and then the server actions that, is, that we uh, need to execute. Here you can provide any like a sync operation that you want, like uh, it can be, but usually it will be like a server actions if you're using it, if you're working with, with this type of, um, of structure, of structure your SVR. Uh, then what is really important, so yeah, basically not right now, it should work pretty similar let's just here instead of the uh, mutate our uh, random joke we, uh, the the uh, endpoint itself we will just mutate our like here the endpoint that id that we specified uh, so here it's all good let's see uh, data is validating so right now it should work identical because as you know here we have your server we have the same basically endpoint just just inside the, the server action so let's quickly go back to the site and try so we see loading we see the joke we can revalidate it's all working fine and let's go back and now let's do something interesting uh, we go to the um, a page where we have this uh, the joke that we uh, that we imported and let's d uh, do the config that's uncommon the config so what is config yeah this basically config yeah, i think you, you already understood what it is you can provide some configuration to the SVR config but the coolest thing you can uh, add this to the server component uh, you, if you have the server component wrapped your client component you can provide some configuration to your nest basically the hook that is inside the config and you can nest as much as, as you want and create as much as, conf as as much configs as you want across the app like with different fallbacks and revalidate on mount and other so yeah as you see we can provide some revalidation options you can like uh, first you can uh, turn off revalidate on focus or uh, revalidate on mount you can also uh, set the interval to revalidate like every uh, three to five seconds it's all done in a smart way so if you're calling at the same endpoint across the app it's all going to be just you know, fetched or revalidated once so it's pretty efficient and uh, nice to use so we added this config and the core like thing to, ma to mention here you see this fallback inside the value i can specify the fallback for them as you see our unique id so uh, this is really important the id that you specified inside the use svr you need to do the same if you want to have the fallback data available and here we, we are basically calling the same endpoint the same server uh, server action to get the joke 
So how is all going to work? Instead of showing the loading, we will prefetch the data, the data and make it available on the server. So we will prefetch the data and make it available on the client. And on the client, we will already have some data uh, ready and then we can work with this data. So we can perform some actions and revalidate this already available data. So we avoid loading states. We have some data ready and we are refetching it when we, when we want it to. Right now, let's set it to true because I want to I want you to see this. We will right now revalidate, revalidate on mount. So how it should work right now? First, we are uh, have some data ready, and when the component is mounted, we will call it second time, which is not the best uh, user experience in our case. But uh, just so you understand, so you have this, um, so you have this um, experience, and you see so you see what you, what I mean. And right now, in, uh, right now, we are using the is loading. However, with the way that I'm showing you, you don't need is loading because we will uh, we always have the data ready so right right now let me show you this way of, of working with this we, we see still see loading because yeah it is loading for the second request but if you just leave it as is validating go back refresh so as you see here right here i tried with a revalidated amount i changed it to false because for some reason it was showing the loading state because we show the same loading for the revalidating and for the yeah, for the loading so uh, right now uh, i just turn off here i turn off the revalidated amount just so, so we just use the data that we are prefetched on the server and as you see here right now it's revalidated because we are uh, refocus the page it, it will revalidate and focus but now if you refresh the page it's still it's uh, like it's we avoid loading states just show the data but now let's try refresh refresh it and we see the loading so yeah a couple of things to say as well for the svr config if we go to uh, where we specified i will like repeat you can add as like as many configs as you want across your app you can also specify options you can always check documentation but it's usually again similar for the react query and and similar so you can change the revalidate interval you can add some um revalidate uh, on mount revalidate uh, on page focus so you can just um, kind of structure the revalidating logic as you like usually i just keep it like it is for some of the components i add like a, a revalidate on some interval when well where I need like always fresh data. It's also working quite good. And uh, yeah, this way you can have the super dynamic and um, easily controllable components because uh, I don't know if, if I've, I said before, you can also have the optimistic updates with SPR. I'm not going to show it right now, but it's uh, again, it's similar to simple to implement Yeah, ba uh, based on docs. So you can easily create like a super dynamic and interactive components without like uh, this, the complexity and other. But the coolest thing for the kind of revalidation, this is the mutate thing, because you don't like usually when we go with actions, we have some uh, server action to revalidate, to redirect. And especially if it's like a database query that is uh, that it's uh, usually cached, like call it superbase and other to re properly re revalidate the data to display the, it in the correct way. It's in a, in a more complex app, it usually requires you to call the revalidate path and redirect user to the to the new page to 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 show to make it updated. But this way, we just provide we um, have the, have the data, we prefetched it on the server, then we imported the mutate from the SVR, and when we need to mutate it, we just call mutate with the ID. And yeah, you can make it more complex with with the optimistic updates and other. So yeah, this is what I want to share. I hope this was useful. For me, this is um, made my life so much easier. I just follow this practice with the use SVR, page on the server, available on the client, I revalidate when needed, like save the database and other. Uh, this way, I, I follow like same rules, easy to follow, easy to, to um, recreate from project to project. And uh, yeah, it works nicely. P please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, please share what, what you're interested in for me to record uh, about like topics or just questions i will try to to record more more uh, this type of videos for you thank you for watching see you bye bye